Welcome back to another episode of Palisade Radio. I'm your host, Karema Mutlu. And on today's show, we welcome Denise Shaw, who's the author of Market Mind Games and the founder of the Rethink Group. Welcome to the show, Denise. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Many investors and speculators who follow the gold and silver markets have recently witnessed what could be a major breakout in the sector. However, years of patience was needed to stay within this bare phase of the bull market. So from a psychological point of view, Denise, how difficult is it for investors to stay positioned within a bull market? Instead of trading in and out of a bull market, is it simply better to get positioned and do nothing? Well, it's hard for people who say they have a long-term view to stick with their long-term view. People think that it's like a lack of discipline, but it's really that the human brain is decide, is designed, excuse me, to respond to uncertainty and ambiguity by trying to create some certainty. So if you get out of a position, let's say, uh, while you mean to be holding it for a long time, for a moment, the anxiety of the uncertainty is uh, reduced or is quelled. And so it feels better, like you sort of clarified things for the moment. And then you're like, why the heck did I do that? <laughs> um, but you really did it because your brain wants to create certainty. So you should, as an aside, be like putting that, uh, concern or, or anxiety over uncertainty into words. But the other thing is it's really a style issue. I mean, I sat next to Dimitri Baliazny, who's a famous hedge fund CIO now, but I sat next to him 25 years ago. And he spent a lot of time learning how to scale into a position and scale out of a position. So I think there's all sorts of ways to do it. The trick is for people to figure out the one that makes sense to them and then figure out how to stick with it. And figuring out how to stick with it has to do with like, being honest about the real emotions of trading and dealing with markets and the uncertainty and ambiguity. It, it really is the hardest mental game there is. So it needs a different mental approach than any other thing and particularly in, uh, other than sports. So it's hard. I actually had someone with a huge gold position who I'd worked with years ago who hired me about a year and a half ago. And the point was to help him stick with gold till it went over 1500 again. <laughs> so as you know, it did. And we succeeded, by the way. Um, so it's hard. It's hard. But I, as I always say, understanding how the human mind really works and setting up the right mental model for yourself as to how you interact with the market, that's like the foundation for being able to do a better job at it. Excellent. Okay, well, talk to us about some of the most common mistakes that an investor can make, and specifically when they have made a lot of money and have yet to sell, hoping for further gains. Talk to us about that process and why it's so hard to sell. How can investors get better at selling winning positions, Denise? Yeah, you know, what happens really is it feels really good, right? And and you want more. So I have a terrible, actually, analogy that just popped into my head. But I'm going to use it because I think it's in a way like this. Year, way back in the 80s, I was on a ski trip and somebody had cocaine. And I did a little, one little line of cocaine and it felt fabulous. And I realized right at that moment, oh, my gosh, that feels so good. I better never, ever, ever get anywhere near that stuff again. Because I, I, just, I could see how you could just become addicted to it. Well, it's sort of like that. I, I used to call it one another a hot fun Sunday and a much more. Oh, now all those sugar is pretty bad for you, too. But, um, the problem is it feels really good and you want more of it. Now, you're also usually operating on a take the emotions out of it format since that's what everybody's happening. So you don't even realize it real, feels really good and you rationalize why you should stay in it. Um, so, I mean, you can do things like learn to scale in and out of things like Dimitri did. And I assume he still does, although I don't know that for a fact. I mean, there's the obvious trailing stops. 
um, the real thing is to put the feelings into words and realize that, you know, you want that extra line of cocaine, hot fried Sunday, cock, you know, martini, whatever it is, that it feels like that. I have a, a, a fairly big global macro trader I work with now. And we like to talk about the free martini trade. You know, one's okay. Two's not terrible. The third one kills him. Well, we talked about that as it relates to trading. So people don't realize that like winning, all winning positions are going to feel good. And the only prospect when they start to start to work and you feel good is that you might feel bad because Either you get out too soon and they go further, you hold it, you give up some of the profits because it pulls back. So like every outcome, as a position starts to work, every outcome is an unpleasant feeling. People don't expect that, so they don't know how to deal with it. So number one is just realize. Like if, it's, if you're losing, you know you expect to feel bad and then you have your, your mechanisms for dealing with that. But because you don't expect to be faced with feeling disappointment in so many ways when you're actually making money, you need a totally different strategy. Um, which is one, recognize that. And then decide sort of which form of disappointment you want to take on, which would be the easiest. Um, whether that's, you know, getting out now and giving up future profits, whether that's putting a trailing stop in. Um, but if you basically, bottom line is if you realize the winning position is going to make you feel bad, when it does make you feel bad, your odds of doing a more profitable trade or choice go up. Throughout your career, Denise, has trading and investing within the markets gotten a lot harder or more difficult to navigate on a short-term basis? And is the only real way to make substantial gains is to hold a position long-term and to be patient? What are your views on this? Well, it's definitely gotten harder. Sometimes I think if it were as easy as it was when I started in 94, 95, and it was already getting a little harder, according to all the guys in Chicago who were on the floor but just by virtue of it was starting to go electronic. Uh, but I mean, r relatively, it was so easy before we had algorithms and, you know, computer-driven trading. Having said that, a couple of years ago, I would have said your only two choices are to go really long-term or super short-term. And I had clients. I had clients who were doing both. In the interim, I've actually acquired a few clients who can trade – three hours, the three days kind of, it, you know, there aren't many of them, but there are still some people who can do it. Now, that's an incredible skill that I think takes, you know, a really special situation, a special person to learn how to do that. Um, for most people, long-term is easier and makes more sense, except for that compulsion to trade around more because you want certainty than any other reason. So again, I'm going to go back to like, what makes sense for a person's individual situation? Like even starting with how does the market make sense? Like what's the, what's the analogy of the market? Is it a war? Is it surfing? Is it a poker game? Um, coming up with models, for yourself like that. So when you're thinking about, let's say, when you're thinking about getting out of that position, you tend to be long-term because that seems the safest. You're thinking about getting out of position and you're grappling with yourself and then you think, okay, this is a poker game. If you put that model um, between you and your decision, that can sometimes help you hold on to things. Nevertheless, it's a matter of figuring out what your style is, your way of understanding the market, and then learning how to stick with it by treating all the emotions differently than, you know, most people would have taught you to treat them. Excellent. Okay. So, Denise, give us some books that have helped you throughout your career and have helped you to guide other clients to become better speculators while analyzing the markets. Is there anything that stands out to you? <laughs> Okay, can I be really as obnoxious as to say my book? I mean, the truth, is, like literally, like how how am I even here? I'm partially here because well, I was fascinated with psychology before I ever knew what trading was. But then once I 
once I became a trader, I was fascinated with trading psychology. I can remember being in Chicago and deciding to go home on a Friday night in my 30s when I was single instead of going out because I'd rather have a glass of wine and read, you know, Market Wizard on my couch. So I wanted to figure out how this really worked. So I do think Market Wizards, there's a lot of good stories in Market Wizards, by the way. Um, but then having said that, what really changed my trading and my understanding of the market is a method called Market Profile, of which there's lots of books, but Jim Dalton was the original person. And the reason Market Profile is so good is that it really charts, but basically it's a better picture of how much volume has been traded at any given price. And if you think about what that's really telling you, that's telling you how many people are active at any given price. And people active at any given price can tell you which prices are more important than other prices. So the market's really a social mechanism. It's not some, you know, it's not some thing that was given to us by God or the universe. It's a thing we've created. It's a thing where the prices are what they are out of people's perception, um, their perception is driven by context. So all you really care about, like if you could have predicted when the rest of the world was going to start buying gold and drive the price back over 1500 and, you know, almost close to 1600 that's all you would have needed to know. People forget that we're trading other people and we're trading other people's perception and there is no absolute fact. So I'll circle back to market profile. I think market profile and anything related to a market profile way of looking at prices is helpful because it shows you other people in the most direct way. Fantastic. Okay, as we begin to wrap up, Denise, is there anything else you'd like to talk about with us today? Anything on your mind at the moment? I mean, I'm going to say the thing I always say, and that's like learn to understand your, your feelings and emotions as a data set and learn to understand yourself well enough to know when a feeling or emotion is integral or informational and when it's irrelevant or impulsive. I mean, we all use confidence and conviction all of the time or the lack thereof, you know, fear and anxiety. But we never get ourselves an organized, systematic way to analyze those feelings. And that's the trick. So that you can know which feelings are what and then you can have strategies to deal with the different kinds types of feelings. And then in doing so, you also get, uh, you become more in touch with your unconscious pattern recognition or visceral intelligence or what we tend to call intuition or instinct. And you can learn when to, to rely on it and when not to. It's a, it's a big task to take on. It's simple but not easy. I like it to playing golf, but it can be done. And for the most part, when people decide to change their opinion of their feelings and emotions and respect them and then try to understand them as data set. Like almost 100% of those people say it gets easier. Excellent. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time today, Denise. It's been fantastic having you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people, hit the bit. How violent that term could be, it actually could be quite violent. Uh, it could be a rip your face off uh, uranium rally. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen?